Hello, I'm Jim Bryan, the lead of the System Capability Leadership Team that covers the Advanced Habitation Systems, or AHS. Within the STMB strategic framework, the Advanced Habitation System supports the Live Thrust, specifically sustainably living and working farther from Earth. The AHS focuses on enabling and enhancing long-duration human missions, but it's also extensible to other capability areas such as ISRU. The importance in AHS can significantly reduce the mass required for exploration missions, which benefits the transportation capabilities. The primary objective of AHS is to keep the astronauts healthy and productive. First, I'll describe how we organize our area. It's broadly characterized into Environmental Control and Life Support Systems, or ECLIS, and Crew Health and Performance, or CHP. We define nine capability areas, life support, environmental monitoring, fire safety, logistics, spacesuit physiology, crew health countermeasures, radiation protection, exploration medical, and food and nutrition. Throughout the presentation, we'll refer to each of these capability areas using the consistent icon and color depicted here. As you can see on this chart, each of these capability areas can be further decomposed into capabilities that we'll touch on some next. NASA's exploration missions include a wide range of mission types. Each mission's characteristics may require enhanced or new capabilities. This chart describes a few of the major characteristics and how they relate to different capability areas represented by small icons on the left-hand side of the chart. For example, if oxygen and water are required from ISRU, it may impact the recycling technologies we choose under life support. Additionally, it may require us sensing different chemical compounds and would affect the environmental monitoring capability. An envisioned future is a description of the future capability we anticipate needing to support exploration missions. We define a few, but certainly not all of them for the capabilities below. Note each short statement is followed by parentheses with letters indicating which mission destination these are most strongly associated with and the legend for LT and M are in the upper right-hand corner. For example, under the life support, expresses the importance of reliable long-duration life support. It applies to all missions beyond low Earth orbit because resupply is not possible or very infrequent at best. So having test-verified reliability in an integrated vehicle system is paramount. For each capability, we briefly describe the state of the art using the same Life support example under the first bullet indicates ISS has revealed even well-designed systems can have unexpected failures and fail in unexpected ways, require modification and re-verification. And we re-verify on ground and in orbit to prove that out before we're ready for expiration. Looking at the first bullet under the countermeasures area, the state of the art's multiple large devices, referring back to the Envision Futures chart, can be seen mass reduction is desired. And so by comparing the envisioned futures and the state of the arts where there's a difference, it defines a gap where investment is required. For each of the ECLIS capability areas, NASA is working both internally and externally with commercial and international partners to improve existing technologies and develop new technologies to help close the gaps. Some investments provide information to knowledge gaps and are applicable on a wide range of missions, such as under fire safety, the last three bullets show where we're investigating partial gravity conditions and their effects on flammability properties. This is only representative of development projects, but it provides a good example of the range of investments required for exploration missions. Hi. I'm Andrew Abercrombie, the Systems Capability Leadership Team Deputy, and while I support all of the SCLT areas, I'm particularly focused on the crew health and performance capability areas. Similar to ECLIS, each of the CHP capability areas provide a brief listing of the types of investments being made within NASA and with external commercial and international partners. We coordinate closely with NASA's Human Research Program, which does the fundamental research on how the human system reacts uh, to spaceflight to identify the technologies that are required for future missions. For example, under the radiation protection capability area, we have several different radiation monitors being developed, uh, which will provide real-time data on crew exposure during typical solar activity and solar events. While NASA is investing in a wide range of technologies, not all the gaps can be addressed concurrently. Resource constraints, the time required to develop technologies, 
and the current technical capabilities available all factor into what should be a priority. These constraints combined with the potential impact that an improvement would bring all factor into the priority determination. While all gaps are important to address, this chart uses the envisioned futures presented on chart five to indicate where we see the highest priorities as being. This is illustrated with the white text. This does not mean areas in gray text should not be invested in, but NASA's request for investments in these areas may be less explicit and specific than the areas that are being highlighted as the highest priorities. As you know, acronyms are widely used at NASA, and this chart is intended to define the acronyms used in this presentation. We hope this video provides an overview of the AHS capability area and helps you identify what areas you would like to provide feedback on. Thank you.